Hi, this is Harold in China. In my last video, I've spoken about the catastrophic decision by Nancy Pelosi to uh, try and visit Taiwan if she is going to carry that through, um, as well as uh, another failed attempt to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative, which is gaining steam, obviously, with uh, the partnership with Russia's Eurasian Union, with Iran, Saudi Arabia, most of Africa and even South America buying into the concept. So China is on a roll there. Um, but it, it's always easy to hammer on the US and, and the collective West at the moment because they have such incompetent leadership. It's unbelievable. I mean, Vice President Harris, like I've yet to find a person who likes her. Um, Biden, I don't even want to, I don't, you know, like, he's, yeah. He's like that figurehead, um, but he doesn't take decisions. Nobody can claim he makes actual relevant decisions anymore. Um, and, and the European leadership, I mean, Boris Johnson, the joke, he's gone now. Italy's government has uh, been replaced or is being replaced. So yeah, it's easy to make fun of the West. Uh, this time I want to talk more about China. You've heard about the massive bank runs and economic woos and the uh, dangers of collapse that China is in. Like every year, by the way, for 20 years, um, China has always been almost collapsing on, wow, this is the last straw. Um, <laughs> so shocking images of Chinese bank runs. Behind me, you can see uh, the Merchants Bank, I think it is. And why is this bank run so shocking? Because obviously you don't see a soul. That means the bank running customers must be ghosts. Must be ghosts doing a bank run. <laughs> so, <laughs> seriously. Um, the People's Bank of China, which is like the central bank of China, has done a study because indeed, I mean, let's not, ex like, let, let's not be too cynical. Uh, COVID, the second wave in China this year, has obviously brought economic troubles to some industries plus um, uh, real estate developers, some of them have gotten in trouble. And so what's happened is that the, the real estate, there's two things happening. So one is just that, that Hunan, that bank, which just engaged in complete malpractice. They offered kind of investment vehicles with like 10, 15% uh, re, uh, interest rates which obviously is not sustainable in an economy that grows around 6% and has like 1% or 2% inflation. Um, and, so, and that was like a private public kind of banking construct um, with uh, corrupt officials involved. So that's a really mess. And it's uh, to make things worse, protesters who went to go, wanted to go to the bank to withdraw and to check out what's happened to their savings, they had their... Um, COVID health code turned red. So the police said, well, you have a red health code, you cannot go anywhere, uh, which was a shock for all of China. People couldn't believe that it's even possible for local authorities to individual target people and change their uh, COVID uh, certificate. It was, I think, also a shock for the central leadership that this happens um, because the response was swift. It took a few days, the national authorities said, um, anti-corruption investigation and that means people are losing their jobs like politicians involved in that they're not going to be politicians ever again in their lives and as um, these administrative roles in china are professional roles if you get kicked out from that from corruption then you can you know hope to get a taxi driver job or something you're really you've lost your status in society and the political status may be another thing that's important in China. It doesn't come with a lot of wealth. It comes with a lot of privilege. You get a nice house, you get a driver, you get like a lot of things. But it's not something that you can take with you once you're convicted for corruption. So you really, um, yeah, you get punished. And that's good. I mean, they should get punished. That's really shocking to see how they abuse the health code to prevent people from um, getting their rights. and going to those banks to investigate. But now here's the thing. This has been played up by Western media as, oh, Chinese society is unstable, it's collapsing. The thing is, these Hunan banks, they were like village banks. They were tiny. And the assets under management compared to 
uh, even just uh, province level banks were small. And so the People Bank, People's Bank of China, the central bank has done a study after these events happened to see like what's the situation, then a stress test of the banking system. And they came out with a statement that 93% of financial institutions are stable, meaning 7% of financial institutions are at a certain risk that if the economy deteriorates, they will get into financial trouble. Now, but the second point they found is that those 7% uh, at risk only have about 1% of total assets under management. So 99% of assets under management in China are safe. And for that, it's important to know another thing, that there are private banks in China, there are uh, private corporate, uh, public-private partnership banks, and there's different legal vehicles that do banking and financial services. But the large banks, like the, the nationwide big banks, like the Bank of China, the Agricultural Bank of China, Construction Bank, the Merchant Bank that we just saw, those are state-owned banks. So they're backed by the state. And um, they obviously do have debt, like any bank, but that bank, that debt is with the People's Bank of China, so it's backed by the state again. And at the moment, Chinese currency is quite strong, Chinese inflation is low, so if worse came to worse, and those banks got into trouble, I mean, there's another layer, which is the asset management company. So at first, they don't need to go to the People's Bank of China. At first, they package all their bad loans that they accumulate, that they think, well, these loans are unlikely to be repaid within the next few years. They package those and sell that package to the asset management companies, which, again, are financed by <laughs> the People's Bank of China. So, I mean, it's, it's, if we look at the details, it's quite complex, but in the end, you can imagine as the Chinese banking system is the left pocket owes the right pocket, and in the end, everything is is guaranteed by the state who does who, who creates the currency of China, the renminbi. And as long as the currency is stable, as inflation doesn't go out of hand, the, the exchange rate is stable, in these circumstances, if a major bank has a debt problem, China can always buy back that debt. And it's basically just what the US has been doing for the last few years in massive quantities with the quantitative easing. So China would just do some quantitative easing if that were necessary. So there's really not a risk. But even then, if we look at the probability that such quantitative easing or such uh, intervention by the People's Bank of China would be necessary, again, 99% of the assets under management are already safe. And the last percent, that's definitely a case for asset management companies that buy bad loans keep them over a long period of time until some of those bad loans become good again and they, that way they finance the, the buying of, of such bad loans. Um, so, I mean, obviously one image, one picture of a bank where there's no bank run cannot prove that there are no bank runs around the whole country, so you kind of have to take my word for it. I'm living in China, uh, I've seen a tweet yesterday or today saying that the Bank of China, which is not the People's Bank of China, Bank of China is a major um, like uh, commercial bank um, where I, buy, I also have a personal account. And they said like, oh, you cannot withdraw money anymore from the Bank of China. I was like, what? No, that's not true. <laughs> I can very much withdraw money. So yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I cannot prove it to you with like hard uh, images that you can see and say like, oh, I see there's no bank runs. Obviously in China, it's a huge country in some places, some things can always happen. And in those villages, indeed, some protests happened. And by the way, the protests were resolved very quickly. The government has now said they first reimburse a small amount, 50,000 RMB, that's about 7,000, 7, 7,000, 8,000 uh, US dollars, so that people can meet their urgent needs. And then higher amounts of savings that people had in those banks, um, they'll figure out later who will reimburse it if it was uh, uh, criminally taken away from the savers. Um, so that's that. Then another part is the real estate uh, challenge. Uh, I'm jumping a red light here, but it's a very tiny crossroads, so I don't care. Um, 
the real estate is issues so some real estate developers have gone come into trouble that is indeed true and there's one thing that's common in china is to buy apartments on a mortgage that haven't been built yet so it's called the time uh, apartments Tifang. you first pay down the money and then you have a monthly payment while the apartments are are being built and maybe two or three years later you will get the apartment now if a developer in such a case then gets in financial trouble and doesn't have the money to continue the construction then you're paying monthly money even though it gets less and less certain that you will end up getting that apartment and that is a situation that for um you know people who buy a house because apartments are really expensive for chinese people so many people spend like a big part of their family savings on an apartment so you've made that down payment you're paying every month and you see all the news that maybe that developer will never finish the project obviously you get very worried and there's been protests about that too including like a mortgage strike uh, where people collectively got together and said we're not going to pay our mortgage anymore now normally if you don't pay your mortgage you just revoke the right to ever uh, own that apartment but because it was a large number of people and because i think the government also realizes that this really would be destabilizing if large numbers of people um, have made payments over years and don't get an apartment so the government has responded to that threat and um, it, it is now looking for solutions um, to either refinance the developers so that they finish the house or um, finding alternative solutions i think it's not been published quite yet what has been the solution but it's always like when the central government starts looking at things then um, things calm down because the national government has massive resources available it's just a question of what is on one side fair to the people and on the other hand doesn't disrupt the markets too much so yeah so that's the situation with the developers but obviously now that people stop paying their mortgages if that happens in large numbers this then again has an impact on the banks which calculated with the regular monthly incomes uh, from mortgage payment um, however now mortgages usually are not backed by some tiny no-name rural bank but rather by the big names and the big names they can handle some some local mortgage disputes um, it's not a widespread phenomenon it's not like the majority of developments that are in trouble so this is something that china has to handle has to look at and it's an economic challenge it's not a social challenge i just think it's very important to keep in mind the last 40 years china has had incredible economic development but that doesn't mean you will find just five years in a row where there haven't been massive problems problems to the level where you know an economist the financial times uh, bbc would have written uh, is china going to collapse next year or like the famous china watchers they've predicted the collapse of china every year for the last 40 years so it, it, it's never been like everything fine and, and 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 easy going china always has massive problems because it's a huge country and um so i wouldn't like be worried if you're invested in china and american big investors aren't worried <laughs> their fdi into china is growing again because they know china is the place where the economy is still growing while the us and um, europe are tumbling into a recession especially if europe cannot solve the oil and gas issue that they brought themselves into with sanctioning their biggest supplier then <laughs> Yeah, that will be a massive uh, recession with that um i've arrived at yubru my favorite craft beer in my neighborhood so <laughs> i'm gonna enjoy the hot afternoon with a cold blonde one and wish you a nice week bye bye cheers guys <laughs>